Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends welcome back to the lecture series of BSc with chemistry physical chemistry paper 4 this is lecture 8 of module 2 wherein we are discussing the electrochemistry part 2 now friends uh, we have seen in our earlier lectures uh, the electrodes uh, concentration cell electrolyte concentration cell their applications also we have seen and we have seen the emf measurement uh, applications of emf measurement in various uh, types of titrations ph determination uh, determination of solubility products etc we will see one or two more applications of emf measurement and then we will proceed further as a whole of the topic okay now as we had discussing uh, previously the applications of emf measurement one of the important application is the determination of hydrolysis constant of aniline hydrochloride so i can uh, determine the hydrolysis constant of aniline hydrochloride this is one of the particular example of what is the application what can be the application of the emf measurement and how can we determine the hydrolysis and hydrolysis, hydrolysis uh, constant of the um, salt like aniline hydrochloride so basically the hydrolysis of aniline hydrochloride uh, is particularly uh, given by this particular type of expression uh, this aniline hydrochloride uh, of different concentrations uh, is basically prepared and we can measure the emf of each of these solutions of different concentration of aniline hydrochloride uh, we can connect these uh, solutions uh, to calomel uh, and platinum electrode platinum electrode is dripped into the solution of uh, this aniline hydrochloride of different concentrations and um, uh, then both these cells are connected through a salt bridge of say kcl and if i add a pinch of quin hydron electrode and if i measure the emf of this cell uh, so using this emf i can find out the ph of the solution and um, uh, we now know that the concentration of the cell uh, the emf of uh, cell uh, the concentration of the cell emf of the cell and Uh, we can uh, basically build on these uh, obtained quantities and we can actually determine the hydrolysis constant of aniline hydrochloride we can um, take the average of all the solutions different solutions we have measured uh, we have prepared and their em from using the emf of these cells we can find out different values and we can take uh, the um, uh, average of these values basically uh, if i represent this h as a hydrolysis co uh, degree of hydrolysis and uh, kh is the hydrolysis constant i can write down this hydrolysis constant as h square h square c upon 1 minus h which is approximately equivalent to h square uh, c uh, in this particular case we also know that this ph can be determined by this particular formula now uh, for different cells um, different concentrations of aniline hydrochloride i can measure this emf of this particular cell i know emf of quin hydron electrode i know emf of standard calomel electrode and using these values i can find out the ph and uh, using this relation of ph and hydrolysis constant i can find out uh, the uh, hydrolysis constant because i know the concentration as well so this is one of the excellent way of finding out the hydrolysis constant of aniline hyd hydrochloride and this experiment it can be performed very well in laboratory and it hardly takes uh, a few minutes uh, to perform this excellent experiment wherein uh, with with very small idea and very small experimentation we can find out this uh, hydrolysis constant and we can compare this value with the literature value that is one of the excellent application of the emf measurement further i can determine the various thermodynamic functions uh, by measuring the emf i know that delta g this standard relation of delta g is equal to minus nfe isn't it so by measuring the emf of suitable galvanic cell it is always possible to calculate the change in thermodynamic functions say um, change in free energy change in enthalpy change in entropy activities of electrolytes now uh, in analytical chemistry two emf measurements have wide range of applications uh, as i said uh, in sensor designing also uh, we have got different applications basically in thermodynamic in terms of thermodynamic functions if i want to discuss so change in free energy and change in entropy they can be determined from the measurements of enthalpy uh, from the measurement of delta g and delta s basically we can find out the uh, change in enthalpy as well 
now we know the very famous relation of gibbs helmholtz equation delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s so if i know delta g if i know delta s i can find out delta delta h so emf measurements are normally made usually at constant temperature and therefore this particular expression can be very well used now since this emf is affected by change in temperature the temperature coefficient uh, of the emf that is de by dt basically change in uh, emf with respect to temperature it, al it also can be determined by measuring the emf at say two or three different temperatures and using this temperature study i can actually find out the um, change in entropy as well you can see over here this particular expression i have so i know this delta g so if i differentiate this expression with respect to temperature i can find i get this expression so i can find out this as well so we know recall the maxwell ring relations or recall the thermodynamic conversions so d of delta g by dt is equal to minus of delta s so using this i get this delta s and once i know delta g and delta s using this temperature gradient of uh, this emf change i can substitute these values over here and using the gibbs helmholtz equation i can find out delta h as well so determination of delta h determination of delta h and determination of delta s it can be determined using the emf measurement this is one of the excellent way of, to determine uh, these values basically um, we can utilize this concept in uh, the designing of electrochemical sensors as well we all know that these electrochemical sensors they are playing an increasingly important role in our daily lives particularly if i take the example of chemical biochemical optical and mechanical kind of applications these electrochemical sensors they employ uh, uh, basically the potentiometric or amperometric um, and conductometric kind of measurements they these are the basic principles um, which are uh, usually employed in sensors so among uh, the major potentiometric sensors uh, we, we have already witnessed the, there there can be the ion selective electrodes in laboratory or in industry we usually find uh, and also we know that these electrodes that depend on the concentration differences in the electrolytes say um, uh, if if i take the example of potentiometric solid electrolyte sensors they are also utilized we can also measure uh, the, we have you must have seen various sensors uh, which are nowadays used for the instant analysis of the samples so they are basically based on the potentiometric uh, sensing of uh, the solid electrolyte material uh, apart from that the ion selective electrodes uh, ises we usually say they are sensitive to the ions uh, say they are sensitive to sodium ions potassium ions lithium ions calcium ions chloride ions sulfide ions and up to the major extent they are sensitive towards the ph of the solutions as well and therefore we can you can see the portable ph meter also we have nowadays we have portable tds meter these are all applications of uh, the uh, principles of uh, potentiometric or amperometric or conductometric kind of uh, principles now some of uh, these sensors they can be used um, uh, with the coated wire electrodes wherein the coating can be of the ion selective polymers membrane these sensors can be miniatured um, for the very micro applications in biomedical monitoring or basically what i wanted to indicate is the um, uh, designing of immuno sensors kind of thing wherein the ion selective field uh, effect transistors have been used multi sensors uh, usually are designed based on these concept particularly they are capable of detecting the multiple ions uh, which are used in the microelectronics so all in all this can be used in vivo as well so the sensitivity required in these sensors uh, is usually very high it may go up to uh, 0.1 millivolt up to uh, range of emf now some of the techniques that are useful in the development of sensors are usually cyclic voltammetry and right now there are very ultra modern machinery and ultra modern instrumentation is available wherein you can study the cyclic voltammetry linear sweep voltammetry uh, kind of thing also you can take you can take chronopotentiometry and electrochemical impedance spectroscopy also it can be studied uh, to characterize uh, many of the things so there are n number of applications of this particular emf measurement and it can be very widely it is usually widely used in almost all kind of industries wherein uh, 
there are very modern and ultra modern aspects are uh, developed based on these particular applications friends <clears throat> there are um, there are certain advantages of these potentiometric titrations now what are these advantages uh, just to list few of them very few of them like there is no need of selection of indicator in case of potentiometric titration so there is no need of prior knowledge of ph change taking place in titration in this particular type of titration you just need to keep on measuring the emf and just go on calculating the change in emf with respect to change in volume the moment you get a drastic change your endpoint approaches and you can accordingly change the pattern of adding your titrant into the solution so this way you can find out the endpoint in many of the majority of the titration so this is one of the biggest use you don't need a titration wherein you do not have any significant titra uh, indicator you can carry out such titrations using based on this particular principle you can carry out the titrations of colored solutions uh, as well wherein uh, the endpoint is determined visually uh, so you don't need to be um, worried about the color change you can determine utilize this principle of potential titration in mixture of ions uh, they can be titrated and concentration of all the ions can be determined simultaneously say for example a mixture of chloride bromide and iodide can be titrated with silver nitrate solution using silver electrode simultaneously it can be determined and that to up to greater extent you can determine um, uh, this particular titration so mixture of strong acid and weak base can be titrated with the strong base to get the two different endpoints in the same solution you can actually find out uh, at what extent these uh, strong uh, uh, ions they are the strong disso dissociative ions they are dissociated and they are being consumed from where the weak acids are starting to dissociate or what is the extent of dissociation you can find out poly basic acids like a phosphoric acid when titrated with naoh gives three different neutralization points for three uh, hydrogen ions the different type of hydrogen ions which are uh, connected so many of such applications can be uh, are there for potentiometric titration and just to name few of them we have listed over here there are n number of advantages of potentiometric titrations liquid junction potential is one of the important aspect that one needs to have a little idea about because based on this liquid junction potential the whole idea um, is um, uh, surrounds the principle of this potentiometry now in case of electrolyte concentration cell basically that we have seen earlier this particular part we would have discussed at that point over uh, there itself however let us now discuss while discussing the electrolyte concentration cell if the two electrolytes are in direct contact with each other the point of contact is called basically the liquid junction now anion and cation diffuse in different directions across the liquid junction so the velocity of anion and cations are not definitely the same and therefore the electric double layer is actually formed at the liquid junction okay so there is a formation of electrical double layer now a potential is basically developed at this double layer and the potential which is developed at the liquid junction it is called as the liquid junction potential got the point so this potential works in opposite direction to the cell emf and therefore reducing the effective cell emf can be given by the reducing cell emf will be given by this particular expression okay so this these are the transport number of anion transport number of cation and these are the activities of the uh, ions so now in order to eliminate the liquid junction potential salt bridge is used so what is salt bridge the salt bridge usually which is shown over here this is one of the good idea to eliminate this liquid junction uh, the potential uh, liquid junction potential development so in order to eliminate this particular uh, liquid junction potential the salt bridge of this type is usually used what is salt bridge salt bridge is usually a glass tube u tube which contains a saturated solution of kcl or ammonium nitrate or potassium nitrate depending on the situation what kind of uh, solution you have in your cell many times agar agar gel is used uh, for the formation of gel 
so you need to take agar agar gel um, uh, you need to make it saturated solution boil it and then you can make it the saturated solution of kcl in this agar agar gel solution the moment you cool it it solidifies so you can fill it in a youtube like this and then you can keep it into running tap water and a, uh, as the temperature goes down it solidifies and you get the salt bridge of say kcl or ammonium nitrate or potassium nitrate and whatever you want so um, this uh, this is particularly the use of agar agar uh, the, for the formation of gel we use now uh, in these particular salts the ionic mobility of say if i prepare the salt of kcl so salt bridge of kcl so the mobility of k plus potassium ion and chloride ions or ammonium ion or nitrate ions they are almost the same that is say uh, t minus or t plus they are basically the same and therefore from this particular equation the liquid junction potential is basically zero so uh, you can utilize this particular concept uh, for this uh, understanding purpose so if i if i particularly use this because uh, t plus or and t minus in this particular case they are same so it it can be uh, uh, observed that it is zero and therefore it can be nullified in this particular way okay friends uh, friends we must uh, understand the its applications in in form of uh, such kind of numericals so if we see few numericals it will be very useful for us to uh, to understand this concept as a whole let us take this example wherein the emf of cell is to be determined this is my uh, particular cell okay and uh, wherein uh, queen hydron is one of the part now the emf is given as 0.301 volt uh, at 298k and I, if i need to calculate the ph i know standard calomel electrode standard uh, calomel electrode emf is given by this queen hydron electrode standard emf is given by this i know the formula uh, we have seen so e cell is equal to this is the formula if i substitute the value i can find out the e, 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 emf of this particular cell so if i substitute emf of this cell so i have i know the value of standard uh, queen hydron electrode so if i substitute i can find out the value of ph of the solution so in this way i can take n number of series of solutions i can determine uh, the ph of solution similarly i can utilize this concept for determining the emf of cell with standard calomel electrode and queen hydron electrode if the emf is given as 0.264 volt at 25 degrees the reduction potential of calomel electrode is given by this and standard oxidation potential of queen hydron is given by this find ph simple um, numerical is this i can substitute the uh, all values of emf which are given over here i know the formula for ph over here i can determine the value of eq using this particular expression once i determine this value eq i know the standard value of eq uh, queen hydron electrode both the values can be substituted over here and, and i can find out the value of ph from this particular numerical so these are a few of the simple applications uh, of uh, the concept of emf for determination of ph let us take one of the uh, one more numerical wherein i can find out the ph the say say the emf of cell of this kind uh, is given by 0.5164 volt at 25 degree centigrade now the ph is, is to be calculated if the reduction potential of normal calomel electrode is 0.28 volt so now ph uh, emf of this normal calomel electrode is given as 0.28 volt so emf of cell is given by this now normal calomel electrode uh, reduction potential is given by this i could i know emf of cell is given by this particular expression if i substitute the value i get this particular value of uh, this particular uh, reduction ele uh, electrode and for oxidation with the opposite sign with the same magnitude and therefore i can find out the ph as this particular formula so the ph of my this particular solution is 4 so i can utilize this concept uh, for n number of applications or n number of numericals i can solve based on this particular uh, concept friends electrolysis you must uh, be knowing that earlier when we started this particular uh, subject or topic of this electrochemistry part 2 we have discussed the electrolysis part faraday's law of electrolysis 
and after that we have seen its all um, application we have seen the complete electrochemistry we have seen the emf measurement we have seen the different electrodes we have seen the electrode concentration cells electrolyte concentration cell electrolyte concentration cell with transparent without without transference and all these parts now what is the use of as a whole electrolysis process electrolysis process is a very wide uh, a phenomena or is a very wide subject as a whole whose applications are n number you can see over here with this uh, block diagram now once the electrode reaction and electrode processes are understood this particular knowledge can be used for say tailoring you can design anything you can have uh, the tailored electrode reaction so as to enhance the required uh, particular uh, product or you can inhibit the unwanted electrode reaction you can enhance the wanted electrode reactions perhaps you can uh, change by changing the electrode material or developing the new electrode materials uh, is also one of the uh, important aspect of studying the electrolysis i can utilize this concept of electrolysis in studying the complex systems uh, many a times in which the electrode reactions they occur simultaneously or consecutively uh, say for example we can see in biochemistry um, measuring the concentration of electro uh, active species uh, we need to make use of the selectivity of the potential and uh, particularly to the specific electrode material um, at that particular material or outside the equilibrium um, kind of condition Uh, so this this kind of application as we have seen in the applications of uh, emf measurement like in potentiometric amperometric voltammetric um, and enzymatic enzymatic uh, sensors we can utilize this concept of electrolysis and therefore the range of applications is very vast and huge electroanalysis potentiometric and voltammetric industrial electrolysis electroplating batteries fuel cells electrochemical machining and many 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 other related applications uh, including the minimization of corrosions biosensor designing and bio, bio electrochemistry are are many of the examples uh, which are the applications of electrolysis which we have so there are n number of uh, applications however if we look at only the industrial part or practical applications of uh, electrochemistry or electrolysis Uh, there are these many numbers Il there you can utilize this concept in extraction of metal refining of metals production of chemicals electroplating electrotyping electroforming electrocleaning and what not okay what is extraction of metal what is refining of metal what is production of uh, chemicals electroplating electrotyping electroforming electrocleaning these are all important applications in industry and one or, or almost in every industry one or more concepts are being utilized say for example if i see the extraction of metal there are two methods of extraction of metals on the basis of physical states of the ore in first method the ore is treated with the strong acid to obtain a salt say for example extraction of zinc and in such uh, apart from that uh, once we get a salt we can obtain the solution of such salt uh, can be subjected to electrolysis electrolyze uh, electrolysis and it can liberate the metal so extraction of zinc can be obtained in this way in another process the ore in the molten state uh, is taken and it is electrolyzed in a, uh, electrolyzed in a furnace both the examples like the extraction of aluminum is of the example in case of extraction of zinc the zinc ore is treated with the sulfuric acid we know this is around say 10 standard of the electrochemistry so the zinc sulfate solution which is obtained as a result of it what what happens if i if i take this solution or this state and if i subject it to electrolysis in the electrolytic tank the cathodes which we need to use are the aluminum and the anodes are of lead so and if i keep the current density uh, say around of 1000 ampere per meter square so zinc will be deposit depositing on cathode and uh, the energy consumption of this particular process is about 3000 to 5000 kilowatt hour per ton 
likewise if i take the example of aluminium the overs of aluminium what is the over of aluminium it is bauxite or you can take rhyolite so bauxite is a major uh, one so these bauxite it is it is treated chemically digested in caustic and they are reduced to aluminium oxide first and then dissolved in a fused rhyolite and then electrolyzed in a furnace and then this aluminium deposits at the cathode and it settles down at the bottom now to keep the electrolyte in a fused state the temperature of the furnace is about the we take usually about it uh, it as a 1000 degrees of centigrade so the current of about say 4000 ampere is needed for this particular process to complete and the energy consumption if i would like to say it is 20000 to 25000 kilowatt hour per ton you can take the example of refining of metal as well the main advantage of extraction of metal by electrolytic process are that the purity of product obtained is about 98 to 99% and further refining is done by electrolysis now what happens in it the anode is made up of, of the extracted metal so pure metal is deposited at the cathode the electrolyte is made of the metal solution uh, let us take example of uh, say for example copper uh, and solution is copper sulfate and for nickel it is nickel chloride and uh, you can utilize this process the energy consumption is around 150 to 300 kilowatt uh, hour per ton uh, for the refining of copper you can utilize this concept of electrolysis in production of chemicals say uh, uh, preparation of nacl so many uh, chemicals uh, such as caustic soda chlorine gas they can be manufactured by electrolysis on large scale potassium permanganate Uh, hydrogen and oxygen etc they are also produced uh, by electrolysis on large scale electroplating what is electroplating this is the process of covering the articles which are made up of a cheap metal by a thin covering of precious metal such as iron with nickel chromium its durability will be increased its uh, suitability will be increased its uh, show will be increased silver on gold Uh, silver or gold with the uh, with the aim to view uh, on the uh, articles like iron you can put with the silver or gold now this electroplating will uh, it can be utilized for the production of metals protection of metal against corrosion it gives a good appearance shiny appearance giving uh, reflection properties or reflector uh, cases you can see the reflectors uh at the building outside roads or cur curving roads or turning roads you can see these applications electrotyping usually this is a process by which uh, the wood etc can be cut in case of say uh, there are there are there are wood cuts in uh, can it can be reproduced in copper by process of electroplating in this process a mold usually is taken first and uh, it is made in wax and then it is coated with the black lead to give the metallic surface and then it is subjected to the process of electro deposition and therefore there is there is a formation of a film of copper uh, on the prepared surface electroforming is another important process this is another applications of electro deposition uh, reproduction of objects by electro deposition on some sort of mold or form is known as electroforming basically so uh, in this particular uh, reproduction of coins molds engraving etc a mold first is ma made and by impressing the object say uh, we prepare the object by wax and the surface of the wax which bears the exact impression of the object is coated with the powdered graphite in order to make it conducting so mold is then dipped into the electroforming cell um, as a cathode after obtaining the coating of desired thickness the article and the wax core is melted out and we get the particular metal shell electro cleaning is one of the important uh, application of this electrolysis the article is to be cleaned of oil and grease is made um, uh, the cathode and um, the iron tank or wet um, filled with the electrolyte solution of the electrolyte and heavy current is passed through the solution caustic soda and hydrogen are produced at the cathode which removes the grease from the surface of the article this process is called as cathodic cleaning and is applicable to zinc aluminum for anodic uh, cleaning um, it is particularly used for the uh, uh, zinc and aluminum for anodic kind of cleaning the article uh, is made as anode there are there are n number of applications you can see uh, which are shown over here uh, 
uh, of this particular um, type of electrolysis i mean these are all industrial applications there are many other applications in biological field in biotechnological field um, uh, in aeronautical industrial field, aeronautical uh, industry there are n number of applications of this particular um, uh, field of electrolysis friends particularly we have covered uh, the major part uh, in this particular uh, discussion throughout these lectures of electrolysis right from starting from the um, faraday's law of electrolysis to the complete part of electrochemistry right up to the cell formation what are the electrodes what are the cells what are the different types of cell what are their applications and uh, we would like to uh, stop here uh, in this particular module 2 uh, friends uh, and we will discuss the further part of syllabus uh, in our next lectures thank you friends we will stop here uh, for module 2 we have completed the complete part of electrochemistry uh, in this particular lecture so uh, we will discuss the further part of syllabus in our uh, further lectures thank you